Hey, hey, okay, progress over procrastination. So I'm gonna tweak this angle a bit. Okay, who's on? Say hello and let me know what questions, what, what do you want me to cover today? Okay, yeah, this is <laughs> Facebook video live. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let me know what questions you have. Otherwise, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk. We'll see if I last 20 minutes or not because uh, I woke up with a nasty sore throat and I feel, frankly, I feel like donkey shit. Yeah, pretty sure that's a, <laughs> that's a description of, of uh, symptoms in some other country. I don't know. So, progress over procrastination. What do you want to know? What scenarios do you have specifically? in your work, or it could be anything, I guess, because this is absolutely applicable to life and to business. And okay, that's just way too high. <laughs> I mean, really, <laughs> just when you think you got it all settled. Um, but I do have <coughs> a couple things, excuse me, I probably will cough a little bit. Uh, I do have a couple of things that people had sent to me so i'll be going over those one of them i'm going to break down into manageable chunks so it's not so overwhelming how to hire how to know that you're hiring the right person how to make the decision if you need to hire because a lot of business owners a lot of my clients we have this conversation uh, at a certain point where <laughs> maybe you can relate you know you need to hire you've heard it said that you know, the, the ones with the, the business owners with the fast growth and, you know, lessons learned will say hire before you need to. And sure, that's easy in hindsight to say that, right? But when you're in that position and you're trying to decide what am I, what are they going to do? So I'm going to hire somebody in, are they part-time, are they full-time? What am I going to have them do? And I'm worried I'm not going to get the right person or I, you know, fit bit once, <laughs> not gonna bite me twice, kind of um, attitude. And it, it can be frankly overwhelming because hire, hire right fit person is a project. It's not a task. And the psychological weight, hey Brandon, thanks for joining. Hey, who, so who else is on? Wave hello, even if you're on the replay, let me know because there are sometimes, you know, you know, if you go live, then you think, God, is anybody even out there? Here I'm all sick and I'm showing up for this thing. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I was like, is anybody out there? So I am talking about progress over procrastination today, how to break things down. I have a specific example of um, making the decision to hire and knowing that you're going to hire the right person for what you need. And I have another question, which, oh, I do not have right in front of me. I will check my tablet a couple times during this and see if there are questions that you have. Definitely let me know. So there are some points that I definitely want to make. The first one is um, a common scenario when you have time set aside to do something specific. And then you go, oh, I don't really feel like dealing with that right now. <laughs> Anybody relate? Raise your hand. Can you relate? Um, okay, I don't see <laughs> for some crazy reason. Can't see the posts. <laughs> hopefully you have questions. Just post them in here and hopefully I'll see them. Otherwise I can definitely answer them for you later. Um, a common scenario where you set aside specific time. Maybe you use time blocking specifically or you have a, a chunk of time on your calendar for something like strategic planning or, um, you know, it just feels the psychological weight of it is just a little bit icky. You kind of have to be in the mood to do certain kinds of work. Do you tell yourself this? <laughs> uh, that's something I really need to be in the mood for. Well, you, you could get yourself in the mood, so to speak, but we tend to put those off, right? You can relate. And it's a habit. It becomes a habit. So procrastination is a habit or, giving yourself the out, as I call it. So when I get up for my 5.45 spin class and I the alarm goes off at 5.05 and I know I have to be 
in the car by like 5.20. So I have everything laid out. I got to plan it ahead. I have to sign up, book my session the night before. Otherwise, that class is sold out. Am I going to give myself the out? Meaning, are you giving yourself an exit door? The more times you give yourself an exit door and you say, oh, I don't really feel like doing that. It's a habit. Then you start looking for the exit door. Can you relate? Can you relate yet? <laughs> yes, I'm sure you can because you're human and this is how it goes, right? So how do we make progress over procrastination? Even if you don't really consider yourself a procrastinator, hey, thanks for joining and say hello. Um, even if you don't consider yourself a, a procrastinator like other people, maybe you know, worse offenders, we, we all do then there are times when you can relate to these examples. So like the time blocking when you say, I don't really feel like doing that right now. What do you do? How can you, other than just the habit of more and more and more discipline, you know, that rock solid discipline, that habit of having full integrity to yourself. I mean, let's face it, there are going to be things that come up and you're gonna make what feels like the right decision in the moment. Um, and then later you might go, oh, why didn't I just get that done? And you end up putting it off another <laughs> one, two, five, six, ten times, especially if it's something that has psychological weight. So that's something I want to talk about. First point today is it's a habit. Don't give yourself the exit door. The more times you give yourself the exit door, you'll start looking for the exit door. Second point is to break it down because the psychological weight of a project, something too big, is overwhelming. In our modern society, we are all dealing with far too many things. We're just, um, you know, I picture like a badminton racket, react, 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 react. <laughs> you know, we're just commitment phobic at this point in our modern society. It's very easy to get to this point. We're, we're bombarded with information and questions and requests for decisions and for attendance and for presence in the moment. And so when you have something looming, it has psychological weight. The best way to make it light and very manageable, I'm gonna get into whatever that means, manageable, is to break it down into chunks. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Ew, but yeah. <laughs> we know what this means, but because we're addicted to the speed and we're addicted to this frenetic pace and the psychological weight of stuff is just hanging over us, we don't take a little bit of breathing space. We don't take the one minute to sort of break it down and pre-plan our work. We're not good at this. You're, you're probably not very good at this. Sometimes you're really good at it. Sometimes it's just MIA. It is, it's nowhere to be found. And you have this skill. You're already doing this in certain areas of life or business or you know wherever. You're really great at breaking things down and following a step-by-step -step and making progress and you're like, I'm so good over here. Why is it so hard with this particular project or this specific thing? So all you need to do is remember that you're really great at it on this side. Shift your mind. So mind shift and see the overlap in techniques. How can I apply what this thing is over here that I'm really great at to this other area? So how can I break down things into manageable chunks? so that the, the psychological weight is manageable. So manageable meaning time-wise, energy-wise, psychologically, is that mentally, mental-wise? <laughs> Whatever I mean. Manageable means a lot of different things here. So we, like I said, we tend to be commitment phobic in our modern society because we're just go, 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 go. <sighs> I don't have any time to breathe. And when we have time to breathe, what we really wanna do is surf the couch and power down some <laughs> Netflix, binge watch some movies, whatever. And the last thing we want to do is get back to that to-do list item that has been shuffled from day to day to week to week to month to month. So if you have one of those, I want you to think about that thing that you've been shuffling. 
from to-do list to to-do list. So think about that specific project, a goal, something that's just, mm, it needs progress. It needs some, you need a win on it. You need to start building momentum. So we're going to, we're going to break that down today for you because otherwise it just feels crushing, <laughs> right? We got to find a way to lighten it up, make it manageable. What do I mean by manageable? It's going to be a little bit different for you versus uh, your fellow business owners or entrepreneurs or your neighbor or your sister or whatever. Two minutes, maybe. If you've seen my recent video, you know all about the two minute rule. If you haven't checked it out yet, I, um, yeah, I encourage you to go check it out. Two minute rule, basically like it sounds, but watch the video because it's <laughs> really easy to just not use it, but it's amazing. Maybe it's five minutes. Maybe it's 10 minutes. Maybe it's 20 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe you're a 90 minute kind of person you can focus for 90 minutes and that is a task for you. Probably not. Uh, that's pretty rare <laughs> these days. Every single one of us is fully capable of applying that level of focus and working on one thing for 90 minutes which has a very specific outcome and they could call that a manageable task. The rest of us, you know, it's we're probably looking at 20 minutes or less. I mean it's just plain old sad, but let's work with it instead of putting guilt and shame on yourself. <laughs> so just what is a manageable task? So let's break that, uh, let's break that hiring example down. Um, sorry, <coughs> between the sore throat and what, I don't know, whatever. I must be fighting something off. I feel like crap. <laughs> Brain's not working as well either. Okay, let me, let me look back before we get to that. The other point that I forgot to make is to articulate. So this is part of the breaking it down because if you if you can't sum it up in a phrase without going eh, then it's too big. If you can articulate it, so naturally your your brain is a problem solving mechanism and it will solve problems, it will organize your work, it will break things down naturally, but you have to give it a path. So when I talked earlier about how we don't give ourselves the breathing space and just a little tiny bit of pre-planning is all it takes to get really specific about what you're going to focus on for your next work to do. So if you take one minute to plan, ask yourself a couple of questions. So you could call this self-coaching. You could just call it good time management or whatever. What exactly is the outcome needed? When I get up from this 20 minute session, what do I need to have done? You can ask yourself that question. If you can ask yourself some variation of that question, anytime you feel a little bit stuck or overwhelmed, magically you will experience progress. Procrastination will be mostly a thing of the past for you, even if you are a chronic procrastinator, because again, it's a psychological weight. And as soon as you start articulating exactly what outcome what result you need in that specific amount of time and you're primed for focus. That's a whole other video. There's a whole bunch of them out there. There's blog posts. I got <laughs> a lot, a lot on that very topic. Then you're going to make progress. You have to tee yourself up for success. And if you're like most people around you, teeing yourself up for success is something you could get better at. So this, all these points in the progress over procrastination today are about teeing yourself up for success. And sometimes just forgive yourself. Hey, you're human. Congratulations. You're human. You're not a robot. You're not perfect. You're not supposed to be perfect. In fact, you're perfectly imperfect. And sometimes the realization as to why you've been resisting doing something, why it's shuffled from, from to-do list to to-do list to to-do list, will be illuminating. So when you can articulate, what exactly do I need to produce in this amount of time? What is, what is gonna get crossed off here? And if it's too big to be managed in about 20 minutes, then it's, yeah, that's not a manageable chunk or a manageable bite. You need to break it down further. Okay, so let's go back. Um, I think I covered all the main things here. Hiring. So the person who asked me, the idea of hiring somebody is just overwhelming and I keep shoving it off because 
I don't, I don't really know what I need. I'm worried I'm going to get the wrong person. I can you feel the psychological weight? Can you feel the crushing heaviness of this? I don't want to take the time to train them once they're hired. What if they don't work out? I then I have to have these uncomfortable conversations. I mean, there's excuse after excuse after excuse. Now, these are all things that you want to um, maybe proactively address so that you're you feel prepared and in control and confident. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about that for a second. Clarity, we talked about it, getting really specific, being able to articulate and break down what specific outcome, what do I need to produce in this amount of time? Clarity, priceless here, focus. It has to be something you can keep your brain trained on for a period of time. Again, that's part of that manageable definition. And I'm going to go here. You need the confidence to be able to act on whatever it is. Yeah, what? That's another series of videos, but confidence or courage. And I'm going to I'm going to plant a little seed here. You have to feel like you're worthy of creating the the project, the outcome that you really desire. So, if it's something that's going to upgrade your lifestyle, if it's something that's going to give you more income or revenue in your business, if it's something that if it's creating a new business product, to sell, um, if it's starting a business, if it's closing your business, if it's whatever, right? Like you could have this find out options for, find out options for um, starting a business. Oh, I got somebody that wants to see our rental. Let me get rid of that. Okay. That's big, right? You have to have the confidence to move forward on that. So clarity, focus, confidence is the beautiful trifecta that will slay all procrastination issues. <laughs> I would love to help you with that. In fact, I have an intensive. It's a coaching intensive. It's um, one nice long coaching session and several days of support afterward to make sure that you're off and flying. You get unstuck. You're off and flying on whatever project that is. Back to the hiring example. The first step that I typically advise clients, um, and it depends obviously with this, with this person, um, I don't want to give away who they are too much. Confidentiality is sacrosanct to me, but they need to hire someone to work. Um, it's their first employee. It's the first long-term employee that they're considering hiring in order to grow their business. And they are struggling. They've been a solopreneur. They've had some temps. They need to get... They need to be able to get in front of the work, but it's overwhelming. That is one of the hardest jumps. That's one of the hardest gaps to close when you're by yourself in a business and you hire your first person. So it's daunting, right? Of course you can feel the psychological weight even if you don't have this experience going on. The first step is start asking yourself, what do I want them to do? What can they take off my plate? You know, what role are they fulfilling? What roles? Multiple. What responsibilities? What do I need this person to do? So you have to have the confidence to say, I'm going to have enough business to be able to pay them. They are going to more than pay for themselves. There's a bit of faith and there's a bit of belief and there's a bit of planning in this. And I can certainly help you through this uh, with a little bit more detail. But define the roles and responsibilities of that next hire, whatever that is. Don't worry about the title yet. Don't start with the title. I think unless you really already know, like salesperson, okay, you can come up with something. Don't start with the title because it locks you in. It boxes you in. So you want to remain open and yet very specific, gaining clarity as you go. Sometimes action breeds clarity. You know what I mean by that? Sometimes taking action leads you to go, oh, well, wait, I don't really want that. I want this. So <coughs> that's what I'm talking about. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Be glad I'm not out in public spreading this germy crap. <clears throat> okay, so that's the first step. So this is where this person, if you're watching later, what do you want to be able to delegate? Uh, start a list. 
a very manageable first task is to start a list of the roles and responsibilities. If that doesn't seem real clear yet, back it up. <laughs> if that's psychologically too heavy and crushing, back it up. What do I want to be able to delegate? You're not making promises that you can't keep. You're just brainstorming. So another manageable task that we often look right past is brainstorm ideas for X. 20 minutes. 20 minutes brainstorming ideas on where to look for this perfect hire. Maybe not perfect, but this good hire that's going to last, it's going to produce, they're going to more than pay for themselves, they're going to help my business grow, they're caring, they're... We share most of the same values. They're easy to get along with. They talk well about my company. Did you pick up on that? Start listing the attributes that you want this person to have. What's it like working with them? So make a list, 20 minutes brainstorm. So here's something that I didn't write down and actually would have been smart. It doesn't matter how you start breaking things into subtasks. Okay, so let me, let me get back. What the heck, Heather? <clears throat> Excuse me. I jumped ahead. Okay. So when you're doing a project or a goal, hire a person. That's a goal or a project, depending on how you look at it. It has a specific outcome, but you haven't really defined it well. And it's not broken into chunks yet. So I love Asana and I love good old fashioned notebook paper. Whoa, <laughs> my, my camera freaked out, <laughs> sorry. So notebook paper is so easy. You just keep it there on the side of your desk. You start writing ideas, start breaking things out into those manageable chunks. Or what I like to do in Asana, because I have it with me all the time. I have it on my tablet, I have it on my phone, I have it on my laptop. Uh, you know, I mean, it's there. <laughs> no excuses, right, man? Then you brainstorm 20 minutes attributes, brainstorm 20 minutes roles and responsibilities, brainstorm 20 minutes what I want to delegate. And each of those is captured, so you just start making notes. This turned on its side could look like a mind map or there's all kinds of things. We got a tree, flow chart, whatever. Let's not nerd out too much, although I do like to. <laughs> confession. I have a confession to make. I uh, was trying out a new mind mapping software for a client about a year and a half ago when we were planning a trip. So I used it to plan our trip to Mexico <laughs> because I wanted to see how the features worked and how if it was going to be easy to use for other things. And we didn't decide where we were going to go. So the first thing was determine decision points. Right? Like I got a big decision to make. Is it going to be Mexico? Is it going to be, where did we, Dominican, uh, Costa Rica? I don't know. We had it down to like some of the same kinds of places, right? What are the decision criteria? So same thing with whatever you're facing, possibly. Um, hiring, what are the decision criteria? Values, work ethic, um, skills and experience, you know, so each of these, what do I want them to have? What's my wish list look like? And just start those lists. You're going to feel so much better. And then once you have a, even a rough draft of what that new hire is going to be like, what they're going to be doing for you and the kind of experience that's probably required to get you the results that you want, talk about it with everybody, everybody that you're talking with, tell them, I'm looking for somebody for this. Now that's basically when you're starting to craft the title by that point. So you have two main points. It's sort of like an outline. The outline title, hire person. <laughs> Roman numeral one is brainstorm list, 20 minutes or whatever, right? And then you can break, you can break those things down further and further and further. So one of the things I look for in an app or a tool for this breaking things down and making progress over procrastination is that subtasks can have subtasks. So in Asana, for example, which is very much like Trello, there's, there's a bunch of them that are all very similar. You create a task or a project. So it's a high level task. It can be as big as you want it to be. So when I use the word task, I mean little tiny manageable chunks. But in Asana, they call it a task. So that's confusing, I'm sorry. 
a high level task or project has a title. I'm creating a five day challenge coming up. Hmm, teaser. <laughs> Spoiler alert. No, I'm not going to tell you too much about it. So I'll put the five day upcoming five day challenge if I don't even have the title yet, or maybe I'll, you know, wing it. I don't want to give it away. And then I'll start dumping my subtasks in there. And then each subtask may have multiple subtasks. You see why I said it can be very much like an outline. Here's where this can go wrong. You can spend too much time planning and breaking it down and not actually making any, you know, not taking any real action, maybe. But if this is what it's gonna take to, to help you gain control, feel less overwhelmed, have something to act upon, and then make that progress and build that momentum, then do it to the level that you need in order to feel like you know your next step. You absolutely must know your next action step to not feel stuck, overwhelmed, procrastinating. I think that probably makes a lot of sense, right? So wave your hand, say hello. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, Heather, I get it. All right, so um, what, man, what was the other example? Um, somebody had asked me about, it was, Oh, okay. Part of it was the app. Like, how do I, um, how do I find the right tool for this? And honestly, don't spend a whole lot of time finding the perfect tool. Make whatever you have work well enough for you. Paper, like I said, I use paper a lot. And I'll get out a highlighter or different colored pens if that helps me feel organized. And then, the, and then I make a little box as the uh, like bullet points. <laughs> And I will put, actually put a check mark in the little box on my paper, handwritten, yes, I will. <laughs> asterisks, um, asterisks, I guess, technically. And yeah, the little boxes. It doesn't matter. You can use an Excel spreadsheet and have columns for different things. Um, use whatever app you have on your phone. Don't give this, don't make this into a bigger, more excuse fueling procrastination point. So, all right, let's do a quick recap here. Progress over procrastination. Okay, so the first thing is you, um, you want to keep the promise to yourself. So when you've said, I'm going to work on this today, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, five minutes, if that's what it takes. You've heard uh, people say when they're starting a new exercise program or maybe they're just Maybe this is just their general guideline. I make myself exercise for five minutes, even if I don't feel like it. And then if I'm really, if I'm not into it, if I don't feel good, whatever, then I'll give myself that. Then that tells me I'm really not doing it today. But chances are very good they will keep going. And they know that. That's why it's a good guideline. You can use something very similar to your progress over procrastination guidelines. <laughs> so when you're you're like, I need to make some kind of progress on this. Five minutes. Great. Decide exactly what outcome you need. What's the next specific action? What do you need to produce in whatever amount of time that is? Okay. Kind of already touched on this. It's a habit. Procrastination is absolutely a habit, and the more you do it, the more you give yourself that exit door, the more you're looking for the exit door. So don't <laughs> just, okay, so how do you fix it if you're already really great at this? Just catch yourself. When you, when you catch yourself in the act, just go, oh, oops, there it goes again. That's something you've been conditioned to, something you've trained yourself to do, but that's okay. You're human. Again, congratulations, you're human. Just work with what you've got. Look at areas where you're already really good at breaking things down and making progress. So maybe it's cooking, maybe it's grocery shopping, maybe it's vacation planning, maybe it's um, your sales process, maybe it's your networking. <laughs> Look at a brand and say, maybe it's your networking plan. Maybe it's your, your follow-ups. Maybe you're really great at those things, but then you suck when it comes to strategic planning or vice versa. Maybe you love the planning and then where's the follow through, right? So apply what you're already good at to what you haven't yet conquered. Um, 
make sure that you're articulating something clearly. Don't just, <laughs> don't just leave it in your brain. Make sure you can say it out loud or write it down and know exactly what that means. You need to know when it's complete. If you don't know when it's complete, then how can you, you're never going to not feel overwhelmed or stuck. <laughs> that, that's a little sad, but I think, I think you could probably agree with that. Manageable chunks. That's part of that specificity. Love that word. Um, hiring. I forgot. There's uh, there's something else on here. Oh yeah, confidence. So if procrastination is coming from a place of fear, then let's talk because that's a little more than I can I can manage in this video today. But if you find yourself going, gosh, I think I might be afraid of success that will slow you down. It's gonna infuse everything that you do with just a little more or a lot more resistance. That just makes it a lot harder. So there are ways to get past that. You're gonna feel so much better. So confidence combined with clarity. We talked about how to get that. Ask yourself questions. Focus, you know, to make it into a manageable bite makes it much, much, much easier to focus on it until it's complete. 20 minutes is seriously, uh, I'm going to just share something with you. Uh, on those days when I have a lot of meetings outside of my office and I'm driving around and I'm only back for say 45 minutes or whatever, and I have to take the dog out, you go to, of course I got to go to the bathroom, <laughs> got to get my water, maybe I need a lunch, and I have, I probably have a real solid 20, 25 minutes to work on something. So I'll take a look at what, what my um, highest impact actions are for the day and I'll say, okay, what can I get done? And it's amazing how much clarity and focus you can gain when you don't have a lot of time and you just have to get it done. Another trick I have for you, if you're having trouble breaking things down, is to do this in the car, by yourself, out loud, <laughs> while you're driving around, because you, you have to come up with a quick plan for hiring or you know who you're looking for, or what you're, it's like that showering or driving somehow, it, it it busies the part of the brain that that causes more of the resistance and it allows you to just get right to the point. You'll start bullet pointing out things that are priceless. You're, you can turn into a driving planning genius, <laughs> breaking things down. I might recommend that you use your voice recorder on your phone so you can capture those moments. <laughs> if you're like me, you probably won't remember them later. So anyway, all right, progress over procrastination. I hope that this was helpful for you and I would love to hear which of the things were your favorite that I covered so far and or today <laughs> and how you're going to apply this. Let me know how it's going. Let me know your questions for the next one. Um, as for as of right now, I'm planning on being back here Tuesday at 3.30 again for more productivity tips to keep you kicking ass without burning out. All right. On that note, peace out. Thanks for being here.